church. The church is the only community that will go on into eternity. Did you realize that? The church was commissioned by Jesus, created by the first apostles, empowered by the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 12, we have this wonderful and beautiful vision of the church that is both macro and universal and micro and local. The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 12, 27, now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is part of it. If you're a follower of Jesus, you are a part of the body of Christ. Now it's interesting because if you ask a hundred pastors for their definition of what the church is, you will get a hundred different answers. And as our culture shifts and, and technologies empower us and new communication forms emerge, this question of exactly what is the church is an important one. I mean, is a house church a church? Is an online church where it's only gathering on, in chat rooms and online worship services, is that a church? It is the group that meets on Saturday morning at the coffee shop, reading scripture, praying together, and then going out and serving the homeless. Are they a church? Is the gathering a church just because we call it a church? It's interesting as well because God has never put a definition of the church in our Bibles. And while he's not been proscriptive of that, there are descriptions of the church that we must recognize and honor lest we invent our own definitions of the church because it's important for us to understand what is the church. Here are some questions to help you decide on a minimal ecclesiology and it's grounded in history and God's word. Biblical instruction. What does the Bible actually say about the church? Biblical example. What practices are at play that can help us better understand the church. Church fathers, what are the teachings and the practices of the early church and what did the early church fathers write about the church? Cultural sensitivity, how can we be sensitive to different cultural contexts and language and people groups without compromising core biblical truths and teachings and intentions? And, and so as you look at these four considerations, your ecclesiology will begin to emerge and baseline doctrines and practices and governances will be clear to you. And remember, doctrines are just really the essential beliefs of the church and the functions. You got to ask, what are the essential functions or practices of the church? And governance, really what are the essential structures and leadership paradigms and accountability paradigms? that are in the church. And I really want you to wrestle with this one, what is the church, because it's an important question, but I don't want you to get stuck in it either. Because the work that you do in defining the church defines the community where we will find the body of Christ. And here's why that's important to this conversation about better together. I know, and you know, way too many leaders, particularly pastors, who are leading churches, but they're not part of those churches. They're isolated, they're secluded, they're lonely, and they only, only mimic at what is happening across the West in terms of isolation and loneliness. A poll that I read recently said that Americans, 35% of Americans admit to being lonely. And here's the deal. God is calling us to live a different way in community, in the church, back to the very beginning of creation and the beginning of church. Scripture reminds us that we are better together. And as church leaders, as church leaders, we need to live in togetherness and we need to lead in togetherness. So how do we end up lonely in a crowded church. Let me give you three of the big ones that I see. Individualism. It's really what our culture is all about these days. Idealism. So many leaders get into ministry because they have a, a vision and a mission and when they don't meet that ideal, they, they become lonely and isolated. 
Intimidation, let's be honest. To be in community means that we are honest and authentic with one another, and that can be intimidating. But here's the truth. Here's the key truth for us. If we are serious about living as followers of Jesus, we can't follow Jesus alone. Togetherness is not optional. Relationships are the catalyst for personal transformation. We are better together. Now, you can't do everything. You know this. I don't encourage you to do everything. But here's a little leadership axiom that I think is going to help you. Lead at the smallest level and lead at the largest level of leadership capacity in your church. Following this leadership axiom, lead at the smallest level and the largest level of your leadership capacity helps you do the following. Modeling. It allows you to model this notion of togetherness for everyone else in the church. Storytelling. By leading small, you are going to have stories of people finding their way back to God that will reinforce all of the value of being together as God's community. Impact. By leading small and helping others start churches or groups, you are showing leaders that they need to continually expand and grow their influence by reproducing at every level. And by the way, this keeps you from doing everything and allows you to focus on having great impact for the local church. Hopefully you're realizing that togetherness is not just an option. It's not just a good idea or something you can take or leave. Absolutely not. Living in togetherness is always a part of following Jesus.